Let's give uh, Chris Kopal Krishna a very warm round of applause and welcome. He's the billionaire tech guru uh, and uh, who currently, ap apart from being uh, the co-founder of Infosys, uh, has his own venture capital and startup accelerator called Axelor Ventures. He's also chairman of Itahasa Research and Digital Evolution that is looking at uh, the evolution of technology and the author of uh, a book, Against All Odds, The IT Story of India, which I advise all, everybody, not just youngsters, to pick up, because here is a man who knows everything, and we are very fortunate that he is here to talk about startups and the challenges that are there. Now, for all, all, many of us know that uh, Mr. Modi, in 2015, started the whole startup movement in some senses. It was there much earlier, but he gave it a prime ministerial uh, uh, let's say, uh, stamp to it. And uh, after that, we've seen startups sprout enormously. We've had uh, the last figure I saw was there something like government registered startups around uh, close to over 90,000 of them. Uh, we've also had uh, unicorns. We have seen on our own backyards, my, my city and your city now, Baiju's, a uh, whole uh, range of uh, Unacademy, Zomatos, all of them turn not only just unicorns, but also some of them decacons. It seemed like a great story. I mean, and uh, Prime Minister Modi described it as the backbone of India, the startups is the, back, the backbone of India. Unfortunately, after the boom that uh, we experienced do, uh, to, in, uh, during the COVID period, startups began to have a certain, I wouldn't say fall down, but if you look at the funding that this quarter, it has decreased drastically as compared to say $30 billion that startups were getting in 2021, they're down to $10 billion this particular quarter and they don't expect it to grow. So let's begin with this. Are we seeing the fall down of startups or is this a temporary phase? What's your view on that? So first of all, uh, thank you, Raj, for having me. And thank you for bringing this conference to Trivandrum. As it's a your son hometown. Of, as a son this of is Trivandrum. Hometown. Please give him a... <laughs> he grew up here. <laughs> so, Thank you for bringing this conference to Trivandrum. I feel this is the ideal place to have an intellectual discussion. So thank, thank you. you very much. Um, you know, your question about uh, is this a permanent decline. feature, decline, or is it something temporary? I believe it's temporary. These are part of economic cycles. The entire world is going through an economic slowdown. And the funding is, in some sense, a reflection of the money that's coming in as investable funds. And investable funds have come down. See, interest rates have gone up. So it, it really you know, attracts investment. Uh, and, and investors, when they have multiples, um, avenues for investment, they look at what is safer. So now the money is going to uh, debt instruments and uh, fixed income products and things like that, whereas equity investments are lower. So startups are seeing a slowdown because of that. Uh, second, you know, we, we have also gone through um, some uh, significant uh, downfalls, you know, the FTX right. in the US and um, we have had a couple of uh, um, scandals here in India also. And when this happens, uh, again, the investors pull back, right? And they say, let me review everything thoroughly. Let me take my time to uh, figure out what is really going on. So it's, it, to me, it's temporary. I am very, very bullish on India's startup ecosystem over the medium to long term. India is the best place hmm. for a new business because this is going to be the fastest growing economy in the world. We will go from 3.5 trillion to 20 trillion, 30 trillion, maybe even 40 trillion, which means that lots and lots of new businesses have to be created. A lot of these businesses will use disruptive technology to create a, a, a uh, impetus, an a, a acceleration. And so I believe India is the best place to be. No, that's very reassuring, except for all those people who lost their jobs. Uh, you know, there's been a huge cutback sure. in an academy. It's been for, you've seen all the big companies sort of knock off people quite ruthlessly. I, I'm, I'm not sure Infosys also had a cutback uh, a bit, but so, not as, yeah. 
fortunately, the IT services industry has not had a layoff. Maybe, right. you know, some people who are not performing, when things slow down, you let go. Right. But, uh, you know, I, I, I want to address this head on. Um, in, a, in a dynamic economy, in an economy that, that needs to support new business creation, just like investors are taking a risk, you need to understand that employees who join startups are taking a risk. You know, everybody who gets associated with a startup is taking a risk. So let's say if nine out of 10 startups are expected to fail. Now, if you join those nine that fail, how can you expect the job to be there? Well, Infosys was a startup when it happened. And if yes. you look at uh, a lot of the companies here, they were formed only 50 or even 30 years back, as you were mentioning earlier whether it was Microsoft or any of these companies, they were originally. So if you look at the startup waves in India, Infosys, let's give it the grant that it's uh, mid-90s was the first wave. Second and third, were there better waves or why didn't we see the same fallout that was happening in those times? You know, there were fallouts. When Infosys was startup, many other companies were started, right? Only few survived, Infosys, Wipro, TCS. But many that failed, we don't talk about today, you know, there are, I don't want to name any company because they're all friends, uh, but many didn't succeed, many didn't succeed as much as an Infosys or a Wipro or a TCS. So I consider that as the late 70s, early 80s as the first wave. The second wave is when Mindtree, Cognizant, that's the late 90s. The third wave is the 2008, 2000, so immediately after the financial crisis, you know, Flipkart is an example of the third wave. And the fourth wave is the 2015 onwards, when Prime Minister Modi supported startups right from the top. And, and that's the third, uh, that's the fourth wave. And these are, you know, waves and, you know, many fail, but some survive. Many may not make it to the same level of growth. They may turn out to be MSMEs and things like that. And that's the nature of the uh, innovation ecosystem. And we need it because these are the, um, you know, the disruptions that bring new technology to the society. And these are the um, businesses that create an acceleration in the growth of the economy. So if India, you know, grows at five to six percent, to take it to 10%, you need a robust startup ecosystem because they will grow very fast. Now, if you look at what has happened, I mean, there were, firstly, there was a boom because of COVID. COVID didn't allow us to go outside, so we started ordering food, so all the food startups really did well. Education startups, because you couldn't really go to college or school, so buy Jews and everyone flourished. Suddenly, after COVID uh, ends, you, you see this huge dip. Now, is, is there a need to broad-based startups beyond the obvious sort of the things that happen in society. Innovative, so, where do you become the kind of, you know, OYOs or whatever it is that's there, OLAs so, and, yeah. Yeah, so there are opportunistic businesses. These are businesses that take advantage of something that happens in the short term. So if you um, look at uh, COVID, you know, the uh, remote tutoring, right? Uh, stay at home and um, tutor uh, students, etc. I believe that's a temporary phenomenon. Now, a permanent phenomenon is online education, especially for uh, continuing education, you know, people right. who are working, et cetera, or people who want to um, take their own time to, to graduate, et cetera. So that is a long-term phenomenon. So you need to differentiate between these two, and any business that wants to um, so create an institution has to have long-term value proposition and must take continuously relevant. See, if I look at uh, the IT services industry, and, and we have extensively researched this for our book. When Infosys was started, you know, we were working on mainframe computers, COBOL was the programming language. Look at today, right? It's mobile phones and, you know, uh, the, the programming languages are Python and things like that, you know, very different. But these companies have stayed relevant. They have uh, made sure that they can find solutions to customers in all these technology transitions. So the technology transitions from mainframes to PCs to internet to mobile telephones, now IoT, cloud computing, but these companies have stayed relevant. So 
when you build a long-term institution, you have to stay relevant. India today, right? right. Has stayed relevant through <laughs> the ages. Despite the fact that everyone's gone digital, we are it, still still there. Yes, <laughs> yes. You know, so you have yeah. to you have to create the relevant social media handles and right. all that stuff. So this is what is required to create a long-term business. I think that's lesson one for startups: is it must be relevant to whatever's and, and, happening in a certain long and, term. Yeah, yeah, there has to be a long-term vision of what your solution is going to, um, you know, bring value to right. your customers. So that has to be there. Now let's do lesson two, since <laughs> you're the guru on this. What should, I mean, first you need a great idea and a long-term vision and, uh, uh, you know, something that is relevant to... That and the stamina market. to run the marathon. Sorry? And the stamina to run the marathon. Very good one. Lesson two is, don't think startups are startups that you get money immediately and you'll be okay, that you have success. Yeah. I know for a fact that Baiju's, uh, I spoke no, to him. Let's yes. not take any names. <laughs> no, I'm just giving you a very positive story. I interviewed him the other, I mean, a couple of months ago and he said he was in a village in Kerala and he yeah, was yeah. great at tu uh, tutoring. And then he took that idea, but it took him something like 10 years to really think. It was not overnight that he became a it, success. It's not an over. Yeah, it, but yes, continue, yes. Yeah, yeah, so, you see, Making money is the outcome of providing value to somebody called a customer. If you don't provide value, if you don't create a valuable business, you know, don't expect money to come. Very interesting. So because that's lesson you three. You, yeah, you don't, you don't create a business to make money. You right. create a business to serve your customer. Wonderful. Yeah. And a result of that is hopefully if the customer is very happy they tell other customers and you grow very rapidly you make money so you have relevance that you said lesson one lesson two is marathon marathon man and number three is long-term value creation right make okay. focus on serving your customers money will come okay the other lesson we'd like is where do you go and get the funds from does the government give? How do you go out actually and ask people, look, I've got this idea, how do you shop around? Yeah, so any, any person who wants to start a business must be a salesperson, must <laughs> have a good, um, you know, knack for selling the idea. Um, <laughs> That's for selling. Selling is very, very important. Um, uh, I think we, we have to become good at it. I was definitely not good at it, but over time, I've, I've become better and better the pitch, at it. The pitch that yeah. you make. So, uh, you, of course, there, there are quote-unquote venture capital funds. These are funds that invest in risky bets, which is what startups are, right? They are willing to lose most of their money because the one or two companies that succeed will give them immense returns which cover up for all the losses. So, a fund in its lifetime will invest approximately in 40 companies. Out of those 40 companies, 20 will lose money, zero return. Wow. Maybe 10 will give you some return, five or six will give you maybe two times, three times what you invested. So what is the... And one or two right. will give you 100 times return. That makes up for all other losses. So, so that's if, how you structure a fund. If you have to understand uh, 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 a venture capitalist, and I'm a startup, what is lesson six, let's call it, of trying to, one is to make the pitch, right? But what is it that he's looking for that you must go and touch his core and says, look, I like what you're doing? So, you know, what you look for is, uh, do they have the passion? Do they have the depth of knowledge? Do they have the energy to run the marathon? Uh, is it a plausible idea? Is the market size large enough so that they can exponentially scale up? Uh, is it a disruptive idea? That means it has to be a mess, better mousetrap than what exists today. So you look at all this, you know, are they leveraging technology? So you look at, see, and do they I like the word you use, mousetrap. What do you mean by mousetrap? I'm saying, you know, what exists today, this has to be an order of magnitude better. Okay. When you say mousetrap, you mean that you better don't product. get trapped in a little... Better product. No, no, no. I'm saying it's a better product. A better product. Okay. <laughs> I thought it was that you get caught in, in your... Yeah. But coming also to the government, I think that's also very important. The government did show a lot of interest in startups. Uh, what is it that the government, say, the government of India and, say, government of Kerala has done? Uh, and how would you assess their contribution to the startup? And what, do you, what would you advise them to do more? See, it has to be led from the top. Right. I have, this is my personal belief, where 
the chief ministers have come forward to support the startups personally, mm -hmm. those states have actually done very well. Right. Um, so, you know, if you list the uh, Kerala has done a, a good job, I believe, in startups. The startup right. village concept that Kerala created, uh, they have a maker uh, village in Cochin. These are all, uh, you know, very uh, innovative uh, uh, ways in which to promote startups, etc. And, and in Trivandrum, it's estimated that in Technopark alone, there are some 3,000 startups today. So, Kerala has done well. Of course, Bangalore is a good example. Um, now, the NCR region, it's just that I think it's, it's the center that's driving that to some extent. Uh, then you have uh, Hyderabad, right. which is the Telangana government driving. So it's not any party that's doing it. I feel it's that where the chief minister is supporting from the top, they have done, done extremely well. Hmm. Uh, these states have done extremely well when it comes to creating a startup ecosystem. And overall, India has become the third best location for startups in the world, in the wow. world, after 2015 when Prime Minister Modi said, you know, we need to support startups and announce the Startup India program. But that's a good lesson. I mean, I've lost count of the, must be lesson eight, which is that the, the government must have a good person on top See, to... Yeah. If India has to become a 20, 30 trillion dollar economy, it has to be because some of these startups become multi-billion dollar multinational corporations. Right. They have to. We have to create a Tata, we have to create a Reliance, many of these things in the next few years. Hmm. In maybe new industries. Hmm. Where are they going to come from? Right? We See, existing companies grow at 5, 6, 10 percent. These are the companies that grow at 100 percent, 200 percent, etc. They also leverage disruptive technologies, and, and we need those companies. Now, just to say, uh, you know, if you look across, because you look at so many companies, which would be the promising sectors now that you think, look, this is a place you must rush to, there's a lot of vacuum and you can fill up? Fortunately for us, India um, has lots and lots of opportunities. So we are going through a transition to electric vehicles in the automotive sector. Right? And that entire supply chain is ready for disruption. Whoever is making internal combustion engine parts and things like that, supplier to that ecosystem has to now transition to electric. We need new battery technology, so on and so forth. Uh, if you look at um, the entire consumer space, retail, you know, e-commerce, digital commerce, now ONDC is disrupting these things. Sometimes it's these um, digital public goods, digital public infrastructure that allows new innovation to happen. And it's a very India-specific model. The entire fintech space got disrupted by UPI. Uh, we are waiting for a disruption in healthcare. Um, because if you have to provide quality healthcare at affordable prices to the remotest corner of India, it has to be on top of technology. During COVID, we did teleconsult. We, you know, did so many things. Now, we need to scale these up and we need to leverage these new technologies and these new business models and those that leverage this will become very successful businesses later on and and those existing businesses hospitals embrace for example teleconsult and make that part of their regular processes will succeed better now is age a factor is it too young to start do you, must you start? Is it too old to start? Where, where, where do you... It's a, it's a mindset. Sam Walton started Walmart at the age of 65. 65? Right. So I now say that at the age of 60, please think of you as, as a startup founder. So right. Start a second career if you want to. I reinvented myself after stepping down from Infosys. Right. Because I now do nothing in IT services space. <laughs> right? I support startups, I support research, I work with industry and government philanthropic investments. So Nothing you're neither too old nor too young also. What age should you actually, is there a... Age is in the mind, you know, in the mind, right? Today, you know, you are healthier when, you know, 80 is the new 60. <laughs> 80 is the new 60. That's, That's what so everybody says, right? happy to hear that. <laughs> right. So you have to, you have to work till you die. Uh -huh. Don't retire. 
and start a business whenever you feel, whenever you have a good idea, whenever you feel like good. So I feel that just after education, when you pass out, that's right. first opportunity. When your children go to college, that's the second opportunity, that's probably around 40. The third is around 60, when you finish your career, so-called career, start a new business, and then... And just before 80, you can still do. <laughs> I think you'll stay young if you do that. You'll okay. stay young. <laughs> we had a guru in the morning, now there's a new guru here who's telling us <laughs> about things. But another point that... Um, no, no, yeah. neuroscientists will tell you that social interactions are key to being young. Right. Being healthy. And, and challenge yourself, right? M mentally stimulate yourself. That's true. No, I, I wanted to talk a bit about incubators and uh, how do, do, you know, do you see that as a major role? Because you do need a mentor. Right? Everybody who has a great idea needs someone to pull him. Now, how do we get those and what is the, you know, uh, do we need to do something about that? Is that an area? Yeah, so the ecosystem is extremely important and, 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 and that's another reason why certain parts of the country do very well. because. Right. Uh, they have mentors. These are people who have founded companies, either succeeded or failed. It doesn't matter, but they know those lessons. They can help others who are starting new businesses. Then incubation facility is one where all the services that a startup request can be brought to bear in one place. Right. Rather than distributed, so you don't need to run around and find all the uh, different services that you require. You can find it in one place. You can also get advice. You can get funding. So incubators are very important. Incubators are also very important in the academic uh, scenario because students wanting to start a business need some support in terms of space, etc. So incubators are important. Um, there are incubators within corporates. So now if you talk to ICSA Bank or HDFC Bank, they all have an incubator now to create startups in the fintech space. So. Take advantage of these things. Find a mentor, find an incubator. Um, some funds have incubators themselves. These are all structures that you need to take advantage of. If you're, a, if you're anybody, if you are challenged, if you find an issue, ask for help. Hmm. Correct? So yeah. startup also must ask for help if they, if they stumble. That's about less than 13 or 14, okay. <laughs> but but uh, the other thing that is there is that once you start up, you've got private funds, you want to go public. What is the advice on that? Many people, we've seen Paytm and others go public and suddenly it looks all bad. <laughs> Sorry, I should name names. They've, they've picked up since then, right, okay. <laughs> yeah, see, um, I have always believed that um, you know, every stakeholder must benefit from your success. Right. Right? Now, in private space, so there are two things I want to talk about here. In private space, the valuation is decided by five, ten people in a room. Right. These are the VCs. Right? In a public space, your valuation is decided on a per minute basis. Every time somebody buys your share, right. your valuation is decided at that point. That's a very different way of setting valuations and people don't realize that. Mm -hmm. Because the 10 people who decide on a valuation can decide in, you know, they can dream about a valuation. But in public space, you know, you have many choices. You can invest in a mature company, you can invest in a competitor, you can invest in another industry, there are many choices. So they have to benefit from that. Second, you never maximize the valuation. Don't take, you know, suck everything out. Right. Then for the new investor, there's nothing left to gain. Right. right? Leave always something on the table so that the new investor also feels happy that they bought your share. They must see the next day the price going up. So leave Wonderful. something on the table. Right the way to success or an IPOs. But we have a lot of youngsters I can see across uh, in our audience, they're sitting behind, but what would your advice be to them? Look, they are, must have done college, just coming out, they've got bright ideas. What would you say? So, I, as I said, India is the best place to start a business. Opportunities are huge. Disruptive technologies allow you to reimagine businesses. 
Second, it is cheaper to start a business in India. That's the reason why the entire world is coming to India for innovation. Entire world is coming to India for innovation. Because it's cheaper to do innovation and we have talent in abundance. Our talent is second to none. Hmm. Second to none. Okay. Uh, third, you know, governments are realizing that they need to support startups. So there are lots of government programs that you can take advantage of. Academic institutions support startups, etc. What you need is, you need to make sure that for the next five years, you can live on a shoestring budget or zero income. Hmm. Because wow. starting a business is a risky business. Right. You, you must be willing to rough it out. You have to willing. Now, I say if you're going to get married, don't do a startup also. You can't take two, two challenges at the same They're time. They're not happy with that thing. <laughs> don't get married too quickly, he says. <laughs> <laughs> right? Because you can't take multiple challenges at the same time. Right. So you need to be very clear that you are able to uh, rough it up for some time. Uh, it's very important. You are able to take risks. You know, if, if a family is dependent on you, they are looking at you to get a good job and support them, do that. Maybe at a later stage you can do a startup. So then of course you need an idea, you need a team, you need to have a story, you need to pitch it to um, venture capitalists and there's a lot of luck. I'm going to also, I, I'm sure this will be interesting to you all, we are looking at artificial intelligence. We have now chat GPT. I'm sure all of you all try to do this for your marks and try and get them to answer your papers easily, uh, sneak in some also. Where do you see artificial intelligence go? Uh, is it a bane? or is it something that is going to be highly good for society? Where does it, uh, where do you look at the artificial intelligence debate? See, it's a tool, right? Uh, just like, uh, you know, a computer is a tool, uh, a mobile phone is a tool, a car is a tool, right? These all augment human capabilities. You know, if I want to go from here to Bangalore, I have to take a flight. Well, I can drive, but it'll take me 12 hours to get but there. But this is much, much higher sort yeah, of intelligence. Yeah, because, because more and more you are um, you, you are getting into what is called knowledge work intellectual work you know what we believe to be human right uh, capabilities right um, white collar work and things like that which require thinking analysis etc but the thing is computers are are where and are becoming better and better at human tasks. You know, I can probably add 10 numbers in one minute or something like that. Right. A computer will add million numbers Billions, in one, yeah. one minute. They, they have been becoming better and better. You know, as I said, you know, if I take a flight, it's faster than me running to reach Bangalore. So machines have been becoming better than human beings for time immemorial. Right. It is for us to take advantage of this technology and use it effectively, right? It's the plane that went and hit the Twin Towers. So it can, a technology can be misused okay. and will be misused, and will continue to be misused. It is for us as a society to understand the benefits, put in, you know, a, a, a railing around these technologies to make sure that we use it for the benefit of humanity. And the benefit is huge because with AI machine learning, we can probably help people perform tasks better, you know, simplify things. Uh, you know, we can, you know, provide better secure society. There's so many things that are beneficial to us because machines are faster and better. But you know, all of them must be really worried about the fact that machines, our generation has sort of at least gone through the entire thing and uh, the, the machines were not that clever at that time. They're getting better and better. But let us look at the other fact. Why can't we, India, be on the top of the curve of artificial intelligence? We always did BPOs, we always did back office stuff. Is there an... Okay, not y'all, not y'all, okay. Software <laughs> development. I'm looking at how much time we have. For We've the got next three debate. minutes, okay, or six minutes, uh, if, if, they, if they permit us. What do you think India needs to do to become the AI capital of the world, can we do it? So first of all, uh, you know, before I leave it, in IT services, we have become world's best. 
Okay, being focused on something and becoming best right. requires tremendous work, and do not put it down. Done. Okay, take it the back. Top five. We are the world's best. <laughs> top five companies in the world in IT services are Indian. Right. Okay. Right. So we I'm are, not looking down at it. I'm just saying that we. So can't we can't you know, be can't be the Microsoft is a, is that a, does. Is a, yeah. is a work that needs to be done, and we became very good at doing it. Right. Now, when it comes to how can we become better in disruptive technologies, we have to invest in R&D. As a country, we are investing 0.7% of money, GDP, on research. And private industry, and I tell my colleagues in the private industry, abysmally, abysmally low. Out of the 0.7%, 0.6% is government, and only 0.1% is industry. Mm. We have to take it to 3%, 1.5% from industry, 1.5% from government. We need to have private industry involved in academic research. We need to do research more. Because you know, artificial intelligence didn't come out of thin air, right? It was an outcome of research that happened from 1960 onwards. So many years of investment. Research is something that you cannot predict when you will succeed. You make multiple attempts. Look at Elon Musk. He blew up a rocket. After four minutes, it blew up, right? They cheered it because they know that there, there are lessons learned and the next time they will not make those mistakes. But I always ask this question, why can't we be, get a Google? Why can't we get a Microsoft? Why can't we get an Amazon? Why do we always Very, have to be copycats? You know, the, so so we, we have product companies in the application side. The best logistics companies here in Trivandrum, you know, uh, people in this room will uh, recognize um, uh, IBS software, right? I don't know, VK Matthews is here or not. He's the founder of that. So, the, you know, when you go to Dubai airport, the, the software that runs... Well, I, the fundamental question, why can't we re reach so that we, level quickly? Google came out of the research at Stanford, right? right? Uh, so universities are important. Universities are important. You know, investment in research is important. Sustained investment. You know, th these don't happen overnight. Our best talent is going out because they're not getting opportunities here. These are the same people who is the CEO of Google. That's true. Of a person of Indian origin, right? right, of Microsoft. So it's not about our capability. It's about that environment. Ecosystem. That, yeah, ecosystem and the investment that's required. You know, US is investing billions of dollars. So just like, you know, in AI, for example, President uh, Biden announced 140 million, if I'm not right, wrong, 140 million immediately to say that let's understand the pitfalls of AI hmm. overnight. So shouldn't the government now, like it said, Startup India, AI India, maybe AI could so be... So we, we are increasing slowly as our GDP grows, our investment in R&D is going up. But as a percentage of the GDP, we need to increase that. Um, right? It, it, it's, it's, it's increasing, but it's, you know, we need to accelerate that. Um, so government has announced quantum mission, AI mission, but we need to implement it on the ground. Unfortunately, our uh, academic ecosystem doesn't have the capacity to absorb so much money. It's not built for it. Um, this is a topic for another discussion. I think so, no, yes. we, we did a study at IIT Madras. This is one place, and uh, you know, don't blame IIT Madras for this. 95% of the research proposals are less than one crore because they publish a paper and everybody is happy. Oh. Now, that is not going to create a Google or a Microsoft. Right. You, need to, you need to look at multi-year, multi-disciplinary uh, research programs like ISRO, right? ISRO is supported by the government for how many years? You know, right. Again, you know, Truandrum is where the ISRO started. Tumba Equatorial Rocket Launching Station, TURLS, is where ISRO started. That was in 60s. Right? It, it has taken so much time. Chris, you know, I don't have AI to turn the clock and make it to five minutes. So, uh, we, firstly, I mean, this has been a fantastic masterclass for all the youngsters here, for all of us. So many lessons. Let's give them a very warm round Thank of applause. You. Thank you very Chris much. Chris Gopal Krishnan, tech billionaire guru.